So, tell me something terrible. I misspelled a word in here. <gasps> it's the only misspelled word. Actually, I didn't misspell it. I edited this earlier, and I put two L's in a word. It's the only what do you, spell check on the whole page. It's going to stress me out, but I'm going to push through. Uh, are you going to make it? Mm-hmm. This is why I don't write. Just deep breaths in through the nose, out the mouth. Do you have to correct mouth. every spell check when you're writing a paper for us? Or me? do you just let them go? Oh, no. I, I spell check them. I get a lot of grammar suggestions mm-hmm. because apparently... It doesn't like the way you talk? Uh, yep. Hold on. It I doesn't like my um, I vernacular. It's okay, really going to bother feel, you that feel, much? Yeah, I feel better already. <laughs> Right. Just a deep sigh of Save. relief. Thank you. Yes. See now, look at that. Now there's not a single line on it. Oh, sorry. and I changed the dark mode, so I'm just, it's just wow. a new world over here. Wow. Both of us are getting a little crazy and wild. What? Anyway, fun story. Okay. This isn't for you. You're aware. You're yep. a part of this. I am. This was supposed to be the bonus episode mm-hmm. for April. Yes, it's April. Um. And for all you non-Patreons out there, I've made it a tradition out of procrastination um, where the bonus episode comes out the last day of every month, give or take, typically the last day. Um, So I was writing this bonus episode and we're like, hey, let's try something different this time. This has multiple avenues. So this, what you're hearing now on... What are we going to release this Friday? Sure. The 29th? Sure. Which isn't the last day of April, but it's close, which is tradition. <laughs> um, is going to be the first two-thirds-ish of this topic, Okay, I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's a fun topic, and this will give you a little preview into the Patreon side. And then the last third, which will be a separate story, but based upon the same topic, um, will be on Patreon. Okay. So this is 100% a shameless plug just mm-hmm. to try to get you to go over there if you want to hear more of the same topic. Yes. And listen to Scott's sweet, sweet storytelling abilities. Uh, they're concise. <laughs> they are concise. My, I See, I feel like I just leave a lot of room for you, a lot of liberty to just make as many jokes uh-huh. and go on as many tangents. And I take, as- I take that baton and promptly drop it you don't pro- you you uh, <laughs> i fumble it a little bit trip over some hurdles and totally miss the handoff see i think you are and that's just, that's my comedic skills no you're more polite than me so you're just content you are a pot you listen to podcasts all day every day that's true and you never get to chime in on those well mm-hmm. you probably do but they don't hear you mm-hmm. so when i start talking you're like oh i'm just listening to a podcast i'll just sit back yeah and let him talk for 20 minutes and then it's over yep because that's how long he wrote for <laughs> and if you don't interject that's all you get so anyway I don't know how long this will be, but the topic's kind of fun and everyone will know uh, the umbrella with which this resides. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. Anyway, so yeah. Very horrible, bloody umbrella, I'm assuming. I mean, no. It's Instead f- of rain, it's no, just see, droplets see, of... See, unlike you, of- if you go to the Patreon, most of them are not terrible. Oh, that's true. A lot yeah. of them are fun. They're just interesting. And a lot of them are interesting. This one is true crimey. Because it was a topic I heard about someone at work listening to a YouTube video about. So, of course, I had to dive deeper into mm-hmm. it. Because um, that's what how we get our topics is just, you know, hearing little bits and pieces from wherever and then deep diving it. So, anyway, all that to say, this is going to be the first part of a two-parter-ish that will be first half here, second half Patreon. Also, all coming out on the same day. Okay. So they're both going to be released the same day at the same time on Friday. All right. Both places. Good to know. So if you want to listen to this one and you actually want to hear the rest of the story, it'll be over on Patreon. If not, you just are going to be left hanging until Tuesday. It'll be a whole dollar. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's three levers levels on the Patreon. If you don't know what Patreon is, just you can just go to a computer and type in Patreon in Google because everyone's homepage is Google. Unless you're a weird Edge user. I have to use Edge. Or if you use iPhone, whatever. I, whatever I your search to... engine is, you type in Patreon, and it's a site where you can support content creators, podcast people, whatever. And there's tiers within that. Yes. And we have three. One's a Diller, baseline. One's $3. Pretty much the same thing, except you get a little bit of extra access. And the one's $5, where you get all the bonus stuff, and you get we send you a pin unless we know you personally, then we just hand deliver it. 
Um, and it's a cool TMST pin. I just want to interject with nope, my sacrifice I've, for the podcast. I have to use Edge. So Bing is my search engine. Uh-oh. That's the sacrifice I make for you so that all of my research is in yet. one spot that doesn't clutter your... Yet. You leave it open on my computer. And if I if it's open when I walk over there, there's 17 tabs of <laughs> chaos that like I sit down in my anxiety. Like I should just look at my heart rate monitor when I sit down on my watch and be like, it's going up right now. I can feel it. I can feel the anxiety <laughs> building as I see all of these tabs. They say opposites attract. Yeah. And every time you get on the computer, there's nothing open. I close out of everything. Good for you. Even like Discord, which I use all the time. Yeah, but if I pull up a topic, I'll have like sub tabs that are separate topics no, I know, that I, I want to do. And then if I close out of it, I'll forget them forever because once it's gone, it's gone. Yeah. If I don't oh, have I a visual. I understand your thought ADHD process. ADHD brain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Anywho. Anyway, we drug on long enough, don't yes. you think? Yeah, no, this is... Okay, yeah. You got to do the thing. No, no, let's not do it backwards. That's unnatural Okay. For Hi, I'm Tiffany. Hi, I'm Scott. <laughs> And you're listening to Tell Me Something Terrible. Yeah, you are. It's not that unnatural if you have enough lube doing it backwards. What? Because it was a bad butt sex joke. Oh, yeah. Okay, keep going. Let's... If I explain it, does it get funnier? No, and if you go to Patreon, it's a lot of this. <laughs> it's me a tra- lot of shameless Me plugging. trying to read something that I wrote not as well as she can write while she tries to tell jokes, and they fall flat sometimes. I hate you so much. <laughs> Oh, that's not me saying it's my, gonna be real no, fun no. when we get divorced and still continue to right? do the podcast together oh and what's real real uh, like real salty. passive aggressive yeah um no that's not to say my jokes don't fall flat just i i think it's funnier when your jokes fall flat <laughs> <What>? <laughs> i don't know because it's not me it's just the like it's i don't know <laughs> It's that misery Do we need to loves go to company. marriage counseling? This is going to be an issue. No, no, no. You just keep making bad jokes. It makes okay. my day. All right. All right. So, oh, shoot. I left this written as a bonus pod. So, for this random April episode, not this month's bonus pod, uh, we're heading to the oft wacky state of Florida. Oh, God. The sunshine. Is it about the sunshine laws? No, I don't even know what those are. That's why we know everything about. People oh, in Florida because they're, they're, they're they have more of like a freedom of information type thing and it goes everywhere. So that's why everybody's like Florida man, Florida man. Because that's probably we get to see a lot more of their cases. That's probably where some of this came from. Mm-hmm. Anywho, um, more specifically, Celebration, Florida. This this is normally a sound you make because you've heard of every topic ever. No, you've mentioned this to me already, and I said, "Wait, stop." Yeah, Tell no, me. I asked you okay. if you'd heard of it. I didn't. I, I'm excited that you're actually going to do that. Yeah. You took my suggestion. Well, I know you found it someplace else, but then I was like, wait, stop, don't tell me. No. Only for an episode. Well, yeah, that. And then there was another thing I told you about. I just told you because there was like one sentence on it. Okay. Anyway. Yes. So as the name might suggest, this town is associated with everyone's favorite megacorp, Disney. Yes. Um, Celebration is is a MPC. Do you know what that stands for? Former realtor lady? MPC. Mm Mm-hmm. I have no idea. Stands for Master Planned Community. Oh, a PUD. No, MPC. Anyway. It's um, a PUD with a master's degree. Yeah. Okay. But not everyone knows what a PUD is, so don't... It's a planned urban development. Yes. Okay. So that's this. Just imagine with Disney money behind it. With Mc, probably like Mc, Mc, millennial mansions, like yeah. the huge mm-hmm. snap together houses that are gross. So... Uh, That meant Disney laid out blueprints for creating the quote-unquote perfect town. Um, I thought when I heard about this originally, it was going to be from like Disney, like Walt Disney's era. No, this started planning in 1994 um, with a $4 billion investment from Disney. Okay. Um, And that was to change the plot where it sits is just under 5,000 acres. And today, there's currently just over 11,000 residents there. It's still a town. Okay, so this is a place you can actively go live in. Yeah. Okay. Still. All right. Yep. It's it's still very much um, thriving. A, um, functional. <laughs> um, and like the utilities are still owned by Disney. They kind of set it up and then like backed away a little. But they yeah, like, because they realized it was very Stepford Wives esque in the nineties. That's just so that it feels like something that would happen in the forties and the fifties. Anywho. As you can imagine, well with all the Disney fans out there, such as yourself, mm. um, this was originally a very desirable place to live. Look, 
I'm really worried you're going to be telling me things and I'm never going to, I'm just going to want to boycott Disney next. No, it's not so much that. Okay. It, it's fine. It's whatever. I mean, there's other issues with Walt Disney himself and it's just whatever. Anyway, this is, this is a tangent off of that. Okay. Um, so there was so much so like desire that a lottery was held for the original 454 homes that were built. How many? 400 and... 454. Okay. That eventually would be filled. That's not a lot of houses. It was built for to hold about 5,000 residents. was like the original, like... That might be about how many houses we have in this town then. Give or take, yeah. yeah. And if you, I, say fi- I say almost 500 isn't a lot, but th- we live in a really small town. Doing the math originally... It was set up for 5,000 residents. There's no way that was for the 454 homes because that's like a family 10, of people, four. 10 people per Oh, Jesus. House. So I think it was originally the, built to support 5,000 residents because there's condos and stuff too. Yeah, I was supposed to say there's 454 apartments. homes. Yes. So the bubble, as it was referred to by residents, would not only contain brand new, brand new antique style homes, but also a progressive school, oh. hospital, and high-tech infrastructure. Stop. What? <laughs> They already make vintage homes because they're vintage and they're still standing. Well, these all had a very, you know, the Disney like Chip look. And, Chip and Joanna Gaines meets Disney. No, and this is theirs is like no, theirs is like farm chic. This was more like wrap around like big porches and tall columns and like I don't know palace. I can show you pictures. More yes, like palace esque. Every picture from or every house in every Disney movie ever, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, I'll paint the picture for you. All right. So you have these beautiful, new, oldish looking homes. Sure. We offer them in five lovely colors and only five colors. Of course. White, yellow, pink, tan, or blue. That's it. And it's probably baby Pastel. blue. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very, it's Easter vomited all over the town. Oh my God. The pink must be jarring. <laughs> so those are the only <laughs> options. Uh, you can have lush gardens. Stop. What? Somebody liked Edward Scissor's hand, Scissor's hand just a little bit too much. I've never seen that movie. Oh my god! I know. Like I, I, I've seen like pictures and clips. I've never seen the movie in my life. Yep. <sighs> yep. <laughs> Every week you bring up a movie that I've never seen. Oh, I'm so sad. Anyway, so you can have lush gardens. Filled with very specific plants from a list, mm-hmm. and that's all. Mm-hmm. Um, surrounded by your stereotypical white picket fences. Of course. Um, they actually have driveways in Ooh, the back of all have, the houses. They have driveways. In the back of all the houses, so oh, no one will see your cars or your trash bins, because your curb appeal has to just be your your grass at a specific height, your garden with certain plants, and then your house with only specific colors. Completely normal. Don't worry about it. Um, so... Uh, of course, we're in Florida. I'm sorry. I, I... <laughs> No, no, wait. It gets better. Let me go. Let me keep going. So it's in Florida. So of course, we have palm trees, right? Okay. Yeah. But ours have been enhanced. Oh, good for them. Yes. Do they have a little bigger nuts? No, no, no. Some play a designated soundtrack with speakers that have been wired into them, curated by Disney. Oh, my God. Do they not know how trees work? Also, it gets better. Others play never-ending bird noises to ease your worries away. Yes, there's fake bird noises coming out of the palm trees <laughs> with speakers that are built into them. Because, you know, it's got to be the Truman Show, essentially. I d- yes, yes. Yeah. I just... <laughs> yes, no, that's what they were aiming for. I have, I have no words. <laughs> Wait, it gets better. Do you like seasons? No. Okay, no, fuck seasons. It's in Florida. There's no seasons, but not in celebration. Oh, please fucking tell me they bring, them, they bring snow in. No, no. Well, first, do you like the fall? They bring in leaves. <laughs> By to, the time they get to, to you, they'll be crunchy and dry. No, no, it's to give it that autumn feel. But where the fuck are love. they importing the leaves from? <laughs> I, I don't They're know. just going to be dead and brown and crunchy. It's just going to be they leaf just, confetti. They just <laughs> waft through the streets to give it that fall feel. Stop right now. Also, in the winter, they're going to come through and they're going to spray paint your roof to look like snow. They're going to put the fake snow yeah, on Yeah, fake your... snow. Yeah, and then they're going to put an ice rink up in town. And then they're going to use a combination of paper and water to make it seem like it's snowing. Excited? I'm so excited. <laughs> okay, good. And this can all be yours as long as you comply with their 160-page rule and regulation book for oh, each stop. and every homeowner. Stop, 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 stop. I thought you were going to say 160 rule, not 160, 160 page. pages of rules. <laughs> yeah. 
No, no. I was like, 160, that's a lot of rules. No, no. no. Pages of rule books. It's probably fucking, fr- oh my God. It's like the worst homeowners association you've ever seen. Yeah. Uh, just tell me things I'm only allowed to do. and Essentially, that's, yeah. It's anyway. going to be a very short list. That one's only 160 rules. And there was some normal stuff, and then there was some weird stuff. Anyway, we're going to move on past that a little bit. <laughs> Can you tell me some of the normal stuff? <laughs> so it took only until 1999. So there's a couple years of development. They started cranking out these houses like crazy. And then, so what ended up being about three years after the first like families moved in after the lottery, um, the first issue started These people to didn't have to pay? They just were Oh, no. You, you hit a lottery- and so you, you had, had to had pay to, into the lottery no, like no. to buy a ticket. I don't know how much. I think the lottery, I don't know how that process worked. Right. But the house was not free. You still had to buy the house, which was like. Okay. Which was like. It wasn't like, the, like let me give you one of these 500 houses. It was like, here's an opportunity to buy one of these 500 they houses that expensive. for a million dollars. They weren't that expensive. They were like. So the average house price in 99 was like $70,000 or something. Yeah. Must be nice. So these houses were like $120,000. So while they were trying oh. to create like this, like, but they were just put to, like, you know, popped up houses essentially. Um, and they, they originally, they were trying to create like this diverse, like culture and fun, but it was right. 80 some percent white because above only, average middle class because people. Because those yeah, are exactly. the only people, one that care, two, the only people that could afford it. You can't get a diverse but, environment if... Yeah, uh, no, it just shed light on that subject. Yeah. And they had a they had one side of town. Like if, if it's only one generation away from people that were being told, no, you cannot buy houses. Yeah. And it had one side of town that where the houses were more expensive and the other side of town where houses were less expensive. Oh, so it was literally just creating mm-hmm. just its social own little divide. ghetto. Yeah. Um, social divide. F- so anyway, so 1999, the first issue started to surface. After multiple complaints about leaking roofs and shoddy infrastructure, an investigation was locked launched it was discovered that they didn't use a single stud it was discovered that 70 of the 454 homes needed new roofs which the contractors blamed within three years within three years these are and these houses are sitting about 20 what 30 30, 30, it's 50 percent above market like it's 30 percent above market so you expect these to be in roofs last yeah 40 years like i mean well i don't know how florida would work but i'm imagining a, 20, at least 20. They don't have as much climate, like, you know, snowfalls. Yeah, at least 20. Anyway, um, and the contractors blamed rush timelines and strict style guidelines enforced by Disney. So Disney doesn't know what it's like to actually build uh, a housing structure. Everything's <laughs> just so ex- like exaggerated and crazy that you're like, that's not how real physics works. So houses can't be built like that. They went, yeah, more for cosmetics than actual integrity. So, um, Going further about that progressive school, oh yeah, that was on in the the county there. Mm-hmm. Um, was it ran in by this Catholic? case? Progressive was more like chaotic and unorganized. Um, it didn't take long for people to start removing their kids and voicing their complaints instead of your typical twenty ish, twenty something, twenty five uh, class sizes. Mm-hmm. The schools in celebration had classrooms with eighty kids, no, from various grades and three teachers all in the same room. So you had three teachers for 80 kids. Doing a multi-age situation where you've got like, this one's K through third, and this one's fourth (laughs) through seventh. These giant clusterfuck of classrooms. Yeah, And there's, with 80 kids and three teachers trying to teach multiple (laughs) grades at once. Yes. All right. Um, I I don't see what the problem is yet. The school system enough was, or the school system alone was enough to drive families away. Even the principal quit in the first year along with a quarter of the staff. Wow. So that's just to paint a picture of what's going on. And listen, you know that shit's not accredited, so it could literally just be Joe Schmo off the street being like, of course I'll teach your kid. Yeah. And I won't go into like, there's like all these, you can go into like some of the social or the societal things like- Socioeconomics. No, no, no. Societal things like uh, talking about like swinger parties and how it's like the the vibe within the town was very- um, Hippie-esque? Uh, Open? It was, uh Yeah. Interesting. Free. Anyway, I thought we would focus more on the true crime in celebration. Okay. Which there's not a lot of, but they're 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 good ones. The they're ones it does have. Fascinating ones. It's not good. It ones. is Florida. Fascinating. Well not good ones, but noteworthy ones. That's a good that's a good Yes. Yes. So first of off, within the uh county, 
city, whatever town. I don't know what it's called. I don't know. It's distinction. incorporated township. Sure. It's MPC. Um, a pod. First, there's the death pond. Yep. Death pond. <laughs> Nickname, not its official name. Well, I don't know what know. its actual name is. Um, so just a few miles, like in the southern. Is, is that where the ice rink was supposed to go? No, no, no. This was tucked in the southern part of Celebration. The I, the pond was, or the ice skating rink was off the main drag, which actually came out of Disney World. Like so it that shared everybody a road. saw it. It shared a road. Yeah, everybody yeah. wanted to see everybody falling on their ass and be like, "That's where I want to go live." Yes. Yep. That's beautiful. Um, it does. Okay. Truth be told, after looking into it, there is a shit ton of like beautiful walking trails here. I would visit this town in a heartbeat. I would not live there. Like the everywhere within the town can't sell Disney merchandise. Like they don't want it to seem like a part of Disney. Right. They want it to seem like a town. Right. Within Disney. Right. Um, but like the walking trails, they have like these beautiful boardwalks that are maintained and like you can tell that it part of the town more was like, done right. Yeah it, yeah. it probably feels it feels like if you got to walk through Disney if it was melded in with nature. Yeah, they wanted a tourist town that wasn't like Disney didn't vomit all over essentially. That's nice. Um, class it up a little except bit with their for, pink houses. Well, except for all like the yeah, the weird ass rules and shit. Mm-hmm. Um so the Death Pond, back to that. Uh in the southern few miles south of Central Celebration is a large pond that runs along the road. As in look the wrong way and you could drive into the lake runs along the road. Oh, so there's like a 2 inch like yeah. gap um, between the water and the road? Yeah, and prior Safe. to 1998 there was no warnings on the road. Um, so I still can't see what could go wrong here. Yes. So there's several incidents that gave the pond its dark nickname. What? <laughs> but most well-known involved three young men who had been holidaying in Florida in the summer of 98 before they mysteriously vanished. Nine months later, a 4x4 four four was found at the bottom of the lake with the men's decomposed bodies inside. What the fuck? Mm-hmm. Say that again one more time. Okay, so... Three years? Three dudes. Yeah, three, three dudes. Men, heard had that. been holidaying in Florida. Right. Summer ninety eight disappeared. Mystery. Yeah, they probably had bleach tips. I don't know. Here's a, it's a speculation. Uh, before they mysteriously vanished. Kay. Nine months later, okay, a four by four was found at the bottom of the lake. A four by four, like, like a, a tr- car, like four an by four? SUV, tr- like a SUV. My mind went wooden, like a like post? a post. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait, stop. That makes no sense. No, no. Okay. So like a it was, okay, it's ninety. I'm gonna say a Ford Explorer. All right. Like you know that was like the that was Jurassic Parky. Like the Ford Explorer a was white in its heyday. No. <laughs> um, was found at the bottom of the lake okay. with the men's decomposed bodies inside. Officials believe the driver misjudged the tricky turns at Celebration and the accident became linked to the town. Uh, the discovery led to rumors that police divers had found at least four other cars oh, in the pond. No. There isn't any reports on those. Oh, so um, they kept that quiet? Well, they say yeah. technically no one's died at Disney because they just literally have the police take the mm-hmm. bodies off the property and then pronounce them dead. These ones had missing persons reports, so I'm guessing that's why they like were linked. But um so Oh, that makes my jaw hurt and <laughs> I have like I have like goosebumps up my arm. And now naturally the pond is supposedly haunted. Well, hmm. At least today, there's a large wall and flashing lights to warn drivers that the pond exists, even if you can't see it from the road. So they put up a wall and flashing lights and all this shit. Oh, that was so nice of Wasn't them. Wasn't it? So yeah. I don't know if that's exactly is the wall like a decent sized wall or is it like I don't know. A I didn't go out wall. and measure it. It's in Florida. There's not pictures of the wall. Add it to wall. the list. We have to go to the bridge. We have to go to the... We have to London Bridge. We have to go to Paris, Michigan. And now we have to go to Celebration to the Florida. Death, to the Death Pond. So excited for this ridiculous road trip we'll be taking when we're 80. And the next one was more like a gateway drug to get into the juicy stuff, but it's just a little blip. Uh, so the first quote unquote major crime to happen uh, in Celebration was an armed home invasion in 98. Okay. All I could find, like I got multiple sources, and all I could find was that a couple was bound and gagged by a gang of armed robbers, like, and they they stole shit from their house. And that's all they know. That's all I could get, like, find, which is surprising because okay. it is Florida. Yeah. Well, uh, I don't know when the sunshine laws went into effect. Yeah, I don't know either. Um, but now. Also, we weren't bombarded with constant news. Like, people gave two shits back then. Yeah, and it was just an armed robbery. Yeah. Like, they didn't murder anyone, or like, you know. And but, they didn't have their dick out and weren't shouting or <laughs> then throwing alligators. That's yeah. usually the kind of shit you see from Florida. Yeah, exactly. Sorry. Um, so now we're going to talk about the first documented murder in Celebration. What? Yes. Um, 
but not the only, which is why there's going to be a bonus Patreon episode. Ooh, uh, yes. So, and uh, you said this this town has a population of like eleven thousand today. Currently, yeah. Okay. All right. So, there's a lot of names here. Just hang with me because they're not easy. Are names. any of them Lawrence? No, no. So David Israel Zenon Marillo, who will from now on be called Marillo, because okay. I'm not going with all that. Absolutely not. He hit every letter of the alphabet in that yes. name. Yes. Was a 30-year-old homeless man who was looking to wash cars in Celebration Florida to earn a little money. Okay. The rest of Marillo's backstory is a bit of a mystery. Uh, he claims to have never attended school, but had been living for years at a homeless camp and was once and once held a job at a bakery before it went out of business. Okay. It's kind of all we know about David Israel Zenon Marillo besides his four names. Okay. Matteo Patrick Giovanditto, who I will call, because I hate myself, Giovanditto for the rest of this, uh, was a retired teacher and counselor spending his later years in Florida. Uh, he had spent time working in private schools in South Florida, Arizona, and he had told neighbors he was a psychologist who counseled young men suffering from addiction. So that's what. His backstory is pretty well documented. Okay. So um, these are actual true facts. He's not like a, correct. Like a psych- psychopathic liar. He's not just going to be like, just kidding, I lied about all that. He's not a good guy, but we'll keep going. Okay. So during a tearful, tearful. Tear- His name, it gave him quite a vibe, you know. Yes. During a tear-filled testimony at the trial, Murillo explained how Gia Van Ditto brought him into his house after he offered to wash his car over Thanksgiving okay. weekend in 2010. You said this is a murder? Correct. So our homeless man doesn't get murdered then since he testified. Correct. <laughs> Look at Way me to go. pick it up on you. Okay. I was um, just really worried about Murillo's safety. Good, good. You should. He should. Um, so uh, he explained, yeah. So he offered, went up to Gio Vandito, offered to wash his car. Gio Vandito invited him into his house. So he's a new resident of Celebration. Gio um, no, he'd been there for a while. Okay. He was, he, he like lived there, lived there. Okay. Um, here, according to Marillo, <laughs> Gio Van Ditto, I wish these guys had shorter <laughs> last names, um, drugged and attempted to rape him. Wow. Well, it escalated quickly. Right. Um, this is where Marillo retaliated as you might expect. Of course. Uh, by beating Gio Van Ditto with a hatchet, uh, smashing his head into a tile floor before eventually knotting a shoelace around his neck. I have questions. <laughs> okay, I don't... Uh, I probably don't have answers, but we'll try. Why the fuck was a hatchet That's the a closest thing a, I, to him? I had the same question. For, like, to grab for defense. Like, why is that the thing? Well... What is this... What is this... What does Gio Bandito have in his house? Well, Marillo remembers a homeless guy. So uh-huh. he probably has some sort of weapon on him. Like a hatchet? Back. You just casually, like, this is my life. This is my pocket. This is my... If you're living on the streets, you know, go, living in homeless shelters... I'm just saying there's less conspicuous weapons you could choose besides... True. I don't know. Maybe Gio Bandito was doing some trimming. Tree trimming. Maybe we shouldn't be trusting Marillo. I'm not uh, yeah, clearly. He just hatched a guy to death, and then <laughs> and then banged his head into tile floor, and then hung him essentially with a shoelace around his neck, or choked him out and tied it. I'm just saying, it seems like overkill for self defense. I don't want a victim blame, but <laughs> I'm I'm just saying he's just got a lot going on. It was either self defense, and that man needs therapy, or he's lying. He's a homeless guy. He's still lying. He definitely needs therapy. He had a bit of a criminal history with not that kind of violence, mm-hmm. but he did have a criminal history. I mean, he's, okay. he's on the streets. Like you feel like the run-ins with the law are slightly more likely. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I had written to let that set in for a minute, but it it set in and you quickly digested it. So we'll move on. Of course I did. (laughs) These are the kind of stuff I live to listen to. Yes. So um, so during also during the trial, Murillo explained that he was a victim of a sexual predator preying on a on younger men. Uh, In January of 2013, a jury convicted him of second degree murder opposed to first. But in April of the same year, Judge Mark S. Blackman. uh, Name. Claimed he did not deserve any leniency for the hatchet and strangulation killing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sorry, that was my straw. No, you're fine. You, yeah, you literally, like, you don't... Obviously, if killing is, him is the only way to stop him from drugging and raping you, uh-huh. if that's the only way that you can get him to stop 
Yeah. But usually just a nice swift kick in the nuts and an eye gouge will do it, bud. And you can get out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like your letter county slipped out there for a minute, <laughs> bud. Um so the yeah, the judge the jury came up with second degree, the judge was like, No, we're doing first degree. So during the trial, defense attorney Michael Nielsen claimed if Murillo had been a woman who reacted in the same fashion and killed a rapist, she would have been awarded a medal. No, she wouldn't have look at Aileen uh Warnos. Aileen Aileen Eileen. Eileen Warnos. I know my people. She's she claims that all the men that she m- murdered were it was in self defense because they're all trying to rape her. And I'm pretty sure she died by electric chair. So Yeah. Lies. Shitty lawyer. Prosecutor Bradford Fisher disagreed. Mm. Telling, I put he jury, the jury, that anyone, man or woman, who acted out of revenge and not self-defense would stand trial for murder. It's not justifiable justifiable homicide, Fisher said in his closing arguments. He's not resisting anything. He's getting even. So why was he coming back for revenge? Because of the attempted rape. Okay. Yeah, he wasn't trying to defend himself. Right. He was trying to get even. Like, it was not out of self-defense. Right. It was in a... It was above and beyond. Yes, it was overkill. Yeah. Which, like, yeah. It was, I mean, I get it, yeah. If he attacked him, it's Murder one thing. Murder them but for he, it, but... He attacked him... He knew he was killing him, essentially. He's pretty much like, you know... Yeah, his intent was not for self-defense. His intent was to kill him. Yes. Okay. So after the murders had occurred... He just used it as an excuse, essentially. I mean, it's a horrible thing to have happen yes. to you. It's, it's one of those both sides like yeah it's hard to and it also discredits people that truly go through i'm not belittling his assault but it really makes mm-hmm. it it waters down the self-defense yeah um prosecutions like don't uh, worry you're gonna your feelings towards the case are gonna change here in a second oh my anyway. god so after so the you're mar- gonna let me sound like an asshole and then no, just no, no, no. It? <laughs> no no marillo um got life in prison in a yeah like which Un, is understandable considering circumstances, but his overkill proved his intent. Yeah, but you'll feel less bad about that in a second. Um, after the murders that occur, occurred, former students of Gio Vanditto started coming forward. Claims included not only molestation, but also that he had invited them over to his house for sleepovers. Oh my God, because he was a psych teacher. He knew fucking all the things to say and do. Yep. It's like they say that narcissists go to therapists to become better narcissists. Yeah. He fucking studied psychology to be a better serial rapist. Yes. Sure. I'm, I'm agreeing with your speculation. I'm not saying yes because it's in this, like, oh my any gosh. of the articles I read. Sorry. No, no, you're fine. Um, there's this also so a detailed report from a uh, one anonymous mother who described Gio Vanditto as a cunning pedophile predator. That was her, her way of describing him. Um, she described that he had developed a very close relationship with her 10 year old son, no. uh, treating him to trips abroad to Mexico, no. Japan, and China. Yep. Uh, at the age of 14, did he fucking pimp that child out? At the age of 14, the Did son... Did he sex traffic that child? No. Okay. No, no, no. At, well, it's still terrible, but that's not what, That's Ugh. not the terrible it is. At the age of 14, the son cut all ties with Gio Vanditto hmm. and would later tell his mother that he had been sexually assaulted for years. That's the saddest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. So, like, yes, he got hatchet murdered and strangled, which is terrible. Do you think that he could have bragged to... The, the, the Murillo? Yeah, Murillo beforehand, and he just they fucking c- snapped? Murillo didn't... Like, indulge on any of his backstory, but there may have been some sort of prior relationship too. I don't know because he did teach in South Florida. Yeah. Like, so he may have, but yeah, it could have been. You're a thing right. Where, yeah, we don't know anything about him. And he had him drugged, and yeah, you never know what he said to him or anything. So yeah, that's that's a lot of filling in a lot like, of could, gaps. Could you imagine if it was just this dude who's like, "I'm going to tell you all these horrible things that I've done," and you think that you're all hot shit, like, yeah, and then that could, yeah, that would drive you to yeah, overkill you, somebody. Yeah, and then you. Are able to overcome the drugs and wild snap. speculation. Yes, all of that is yeah. So as you can imagine, this whole story rocked the celebration community. Hmm, I wonder why. Imagine that. It's terrible all around. Um, and it had been to this point the only murder and celebration, and it would be the only one until very very recently. Oh. Um. Yes. Well, look at them go. What year did that happen in? Uh, ninety eight. Ninety eight. So yep. they made it a whole like twenty two years before something mm-hmm. bad happened. And there's another one that. Recently had a verdict come to it within the last, let's say. Wait, another one is in like two more? Another murder come to 
a verdict in a trial about 10 days ago. Okay. Uh, and if you want to hear the rest of that, you have to go to Patreon. Hashtag shameless plugging. Yes. Patreon.com backslash whatever. Just search Tell Me Something Terrible in Patreon. If we don't come up, then tell us. But I'm pretty sure we'll come up. Yeah. Um, And it'll be our picture. You'll see us. But anyway, so the most recent story, which is, I'm going to say worse than this one, but there's definitely a person to hate. You'll hate them. Okay. You'll hate the person. It's not as like messy, yeah, like emotionally. No, no, no. You will know which side of the story to be on with a 100% certainty. Perfect. Yep. I like that better where you have a monster and not just yeah. both sides. Just except being two, instead of two monsters, yeah. essentially. Okay. Sources. Real quick. Don't like those conflicted. I like the black and white. Well, I was trying to. Feelings. You like to paint a picture where like you kind of lead me on and then like drop hammers. I was just like, no, this one, I'm just giving you the facts. And there's not a ton of details about it besides what I told you. That's crazy. So I used Wikipedia. Okay. Mainly for all the Celebration Florida deets. Um, Appreciate it. Uh, I used a news.com article called The Creepy History of Disney's Perfect Town, a mirror.co.uk article called The Dark History, Dark Past of Disney's Perfect Town, including Murder, Suicide, and Death Pond, and then an Orlando Sentinel.com article. That I had to create a stupid account to look at. Aww. I hate all these newspaper I ha- websites. I've had to do that with a couple. I get like the Wichita, Kansas news. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that one was David Murillo, first person convicted of murder and celebration, sentenced to life in prison. Okay. And then I have a bunch of sources for the Patreon one, but I've this is as far as I've gotten. Okay. I typed patrons real big and then one paragraph. Proud of you. <laughs> Thank you. And that one, yeah, will be available today or whenever you're listening to this anytime in the future. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, thanks for listening. Thank you. If did, you've made it this did, far. Congrats. How was that for you? That was awesome. Normally, I do happy, I'm lighthearted. I'm sorry. It was noteworthy. Yes. Yes. As is, yeah, more applicable. <laughs> yeah. For, for in case you're curious what the Patreon episodes are, normally they're palate cleansers. I am the, the like, refreshing drink after a hot piece of pizza. That's no, you had that drink. one murder that well, was... Well, yeah, I've done some murders. Yeah. But I... I but they're old. Like, because there's no expectations there, mm-hmm. I feel like I can kind of write about whatever I want. Yeah. Which is good because I only will write about stuff I find interesting because I'm not Me? passionate about writing. finds everything writing. interesting? Yes. I'm like, if it's not like up my alley, I'm very unlikely to write a four-page paper yeah, about it. Yeah, and I am very much like, I love everything, so yes. I find everything fascinating. This is true. So anyway, thanks for listening. Sorry about my writing. And reading. You did just fine. Thanks. It means a lot. You did wonderful, sweetie. Oh, appreciate it. That sweetie was so not condescending. Mm-mm. Anyway, thanks for listening. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Oof, that was terrible. Thanks for listening to our terrible podcast. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts, or wherever you like to listen. Feel free to follow us on Twitter at TMSTPod. And if you'd like to support the show, you can find us on Patreon at Tell Me Something Terrible.